Hello everyone, I'm Bets Golden, and today I am going to be going over seven different ways you can use Color Burst. I have about 12 different Color Bursts here with me that I'm going to be using along with this really wonderful stamp by Picket Fences. It's called Pretty Birds. I was introduced to them at Creativation and I saw this stamp and I just knew right away I, I had to have it. My son has a cockatiel and it is wonderful. So I'm going to be creating some really colorful backgrounds um, with this stamp set using the Color Burst and then also I'm going to be doing some other things with Color Burst concentrating on the birds. So the first thing I want to mention before I dive in is Color Burst are a water-based product. They intermix with water, so you really need to be respectful of the color family if you don't want brown. If you don't mind if you have a muddy look, sometimes I don't care, then don't worry about it, but you're going to want to keep your light colors together. That means you want to keep your your blue tones together and your red tones together. So your warms and your cool. So think of fire and then for your warms and think of water for your cool. So a warm that would mix well together would be the um, the crimson, the orange, and the lemon yellow. And then over here it would be your um, this one, tangerine and fuchsia. Those would mix well together. And the one that can kind of go into either or is definitely the yellow bases because if you want to do a, um, a cool mix, you can do the lemon yellow, the green, and the ultramarine blue. And then over here, it can definitely be um, this one, chartreuse, I can't even say it, with turquoise, and then also the lime green. Those would mix really well together. The color that you need to be extremely careful with is your purples. Purples, if mixed with anything other than a red or a blue, will give you mud. So just think of those things, keep those things in mind as you are mixing your colors. Um, however, you know, it, it may it sound complicated, but it's really not. And once you start to mix colors, you'll start to figure it out. So let's go on into the first te technique. First technique is just sprinkle a mist and all you're going to do is you're just going to lay out your color burst on a piece of um, mixed media or watercolor paper. This is Tim Holtz distressed watercolor paper for this technique and I have chosen to do this in a warm palette so I'm going to be laying out some crimson and this is just the typical usual way easiest way to use color burst along with some orange and then I'm going to be finishing up with some lemon yellow and you just kind of spank the bottom of the color burst and if it gets a little bit if the nozzle gets clogged you can just take a needle to it and unclog it but I am getting some color out of that it doesn't take much. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take your water bottle. I do like Ken Oliver's water bottle mister. Mist it off to the side. Make sure that there's a mist because the nozzle is, um, it is, it, you can make it a fine mist. You can make it um, more of a spray or a nice mist. This is a mist. And then you're just going to take and mist it out like so. Once you get it to the to the level that you like, I like that. I don't want to spray it out anymore. Let it dry, and then you're going to pop your stamp on top to create your card. And for this technique, I really like to use a simple stamp. I don't want to have a very colorful stamp. That's why I love these birds, because they can be cockatoos. Second technique is very similar to the first technique. However, I find it extremely useful when I want to have a little bit more predictability of where my color is going to go. And if I don't want my powder to go flying off of my paper in case I'm working in an area that has a fan or I'm outdoor and it's windy. And that is mist, sprinkle, mist. And the second mist on that may not be a necessary thing for you to do because you may like how it it lays. So what you're going to do is, again, you're going to take a watercolor based paper, mixed media paper, and you are just going to mist it first with some water. 
And then from there, you're going to lay out your color. This time I'm using this beautiful yellow. And then I'm going to take my lime green. And this just really allows my color burst to stick and stay. And then I'm going to finish up with some turquoise. And I can go back in and fill in the spots that maybe I didn't get enough of. And then once you lay it all out, if you're not happy with, with the intensity of it, if you want to loosen it up a little bit more, you can just go over with your spray bottle and spray it out to get even more movement on the paper. And of course, you can go on through and just continue to layer these colors out as much as you like until you get the intensity that you like. So let's go on to number three. So technique number three is to actually use it as watercolor paint and go ahead and paint with it. To do this technique, I took a embossing pad and embossed this image in black and what that allows me to do is kind of paint within the lines a little bit better than if I didn't have it down and what you do is you just take your color that you want and you're going to just put it off to the side like so tap a little bit out and then you're going to take your water spray bottle and just mist it down until you get the intensity that you like and dip your paintbrush into it. Pick up some color and we're just going to make this bird kind of funny. So I like this technique because you can use all of the colors and you can get a precision cover on it so you don't have to worry so much about if things mix. So I'm just going to lay out some fun colors. Um, this is going to be kind of a whimsical bird. So this is going to be ultramarine. And I spray it lightly because I don't really want it to fly. And then you can just start to paint out your colors like so. And if it is a little bit too bright for you or too intense, you can always just take and get your brush wet with some water to help bring down that intensity. So that's such a pretty color, the ultramarine blue. And as it dries, it does tend to lighten up a little bit. So keep that in mind. So if you want it really dark, you're gonna wanna really layer on the color. But if you don't want it really dark, then you wouldn't necessarily do that. And then I'm gonna take some lemon yellow on this and I'm actually going to mix that in with that um, blue and pull it up to the little bird's head. So like I said, this is a little whimsical guy. Okay, so I just want to make sure that I get the most of that color out that I can. I don't want to get it all out because I do want to mix the colors a little bit. There, oh yeah, that's what I want. I want the green. And then I'm just going to pull it on up through like so. And just paint my bird in like you would normally do watercolor. The cool thing with watercolor is if it gets outside of the lines, it's like, okay, that's like a really cool look. And then I just kind of pull that on down through and now he's kind of a funky looking bird. Cause I don't know any birds in nature that look like that, but this one does. And if that color is too intense, you can always go in with a towel or a, um, 
a rag and just loosen it up. You can always remove the color like I'm doing right now. And that really is quite lovely. All right, let's go on to technique number four. Technique number four is to create your own mermaid pins. What is a mermaid pin? A mermaid pin is basically a paintbrush pin filled up with a water-based medium of your choice. These are by Nuvo, and I only put in about that much water, and the reason is because if you're not gonna use all of this on your project, you will be left with leftovers and it's hard to dump after you mix it. So for this color, I want to create a lime green and a chartreuse type color. So I'm gonna put in here some lime green and it's basically just going to create my own watercolor. And then for the next one, I want to do a yellow base. So you just mix it up like that. And for this one, we're going to do a yellow. If you don't have these watercolor pencils, no worries. You can just do the technique that I did in the last one and it will be totally fine. The yellow ones can be a little bit tricky to get out, I'm noticing. All right. And these Aquaflow pins are so wonderful. You can also use Glimmer Mist in them, and you can use um, just regular water, you know, if you want to lay down watercolor um, pencils. That's so much fun as well. And then you're just going to take, and um, I always go off to the side a little bit. before I start and that has no, it's showing me no color. <laughs> so I'm gonna add a little bit more. So I took this little filter piece out for this and that it helped pull in that color. So I'm just going to take this on down on my little guy. I did stamp this image with a stays on ink um, to keep it from running because it's a waterproof type ink and then I just paint it like I would a picture so these are fun brushes to have in your arsenal of things I need to take out the center of this too I think let's see if this will let me work here oh there we go this one so <clears throat> I'm just painting over it and getting some really pretty effects. So this is a really wonderful alternative to your paintbrush and dipping it in water. It's just filling these up. Something else you can do that's not part of this um, video but is wonderful is you can actually go ahead and create your own mist out of these by putting them in your little bottles with maybe even some mica powder and creating your own glimmer mist type. Okay, so that's how you'd use your mermaid pins. So the technique five, the fifth way that you can use this is, this is a really great technique is you can use it with modeling paste. And what makes this so wonderful is that you do not, when you add the color to it, it will not change the texture of your modeling paste and your color 
will be nice and intense because it is a powdered pigment. So you're gonna wanna take some of your modeling paste and just put it on your work surface. I'm using this flat mat by Ken Oliver. Um, I find it to be the best mat, literally, the best craft mat ever. It's wonderful. And then I'm just going to use this green in it. You can mix uh, several colors if you want, but I want the green and you just are gonna mix You're just going to mix it until you have it to your liking. So as you can see, nice and green. Some people really like to have the green streaks and things through it or others like a smoother type texture. So you're just gonna mix it all up like so. And this is really fun also to mix different colors you can have a couple different modeling paste off and and create you know three different piles and you really put it on your stencil so it can be lots of fun and then once you get it mixed to your liking you are going to apply it to your stencil kind of like you'd frost cake this kind of has a consistency of cream cheese so you're just going to take it and run it on out like so You're gonna to wanna to also clean up your work surface and your stencil when you're done because this will dry permanently and it will ruin your stencil and you don't want that. So I'm going way over the edges like so. Making sure that they're all covered because that's how I want my background to be. And then you're just going to pick it up off of the corner and reveal your design. And it's super crisp and it'll hold its shape beautifully. Look how wonderful that is. I'm going to be using this stencil for the next technique as well. For this technique, we actually are going to be using the stencil again, and I'm just going to be using, I think, one of the color bursts, and it requires two pieces of paper. I thought about using the Distress watercolor paper, but I really wanted to see how it would lay on this just 65 pound cardstock. So, what you're going to do is you're going to take your water and you're going to mist this down first. And then you're gonna take and put your stencil over it. Now you don't have to mist it down first, but for this, I like to. And then you're just going to tap all around. And I think I am, you know what? I think I'm gonna pull in some lime green too. I think that would be pretty. And then I'll do a little bit of the turquoise as well. And then we're just going to take and spray it. And then with our other sheet that I've already started to get wet, we're just going to take this and lay it on top like a sandwich effect. Like so. And this is more just to kind of pick up the excess of the color burst. <laughs> All right, and then we're gonna take this over and you could do this in a book too. And you're left with not exactly the image, but it's kind of cool with the holes and stuff there. And then this one will be a real loose leaf image. So you can kind of see the leaf through let me do it again on some distress cardstock just to see what that looks like. But it's kind of cool. It's fun. 
a little bit different. You can pick up some of that color if you want to. And you do lose your image a little bit. So maybe this is more of a lesson on what happens when you use it on 65 pound cardstock instead of say just um, some watercolor cardstock. So let's go ahead, repeat this one more time with some watercolor cardstock. Now I have some watercolor cardstock. This is by Prima this time, not my distress. I just, not my distress by Tim Holtz watercolor. I kind of want to see, you know, how this would work. So again, I'm misting it down. And then I have a little bit of residual here on the stencil already, which is okay. And then I'm just going to tap some color through. I'm using the green, the turquoise, and then also the lime green as well. And it's already starting to move a little bit. I, I did it more so it kind of hold it in place. And this time I might not saturate it as much with the water to get it to move. Oop, that was a little bit out of your frame, I'm sorry. So I'm just doing a real slow type spray there. And then I am gonna just take and lay this one on top of it, sandwich it in there. I'm cheating, I'm trying to clean up as I go. And that left a really cool imprint. I love that, that is so pretty. And then this one. So this left some of the leaves. Definitely a different look. You definitely can't tell that it was leaves, but it's still cool. So experiment with your stencils as well. All right, we're gonna move on to the seventh and final technique. This is the seventh and final technique I'm gonna show you today, and it is by far my favorite. It is embossing a stamp and then adding your color purse on top of it. I am using my very favorite background stamp. Um, I really love how it pulls in this. It's a beautiful rose. It's by Brutus Monroe. You really can't see it because I've used it so much. But what I did was I went ahead and I embossed it, and then I just went over it with some white embossing powder, and it's really gonna make this image pop. So. For this card, I am going to mix up, I'm just gonna lay out a lot of color and um, we'll see what happens. So up here in the corner, I wanna put some violet. And then down here in this corner, I wanna put some orchid. So I am just gonna go for a lot of color. And then in this one, I wanna do ultra blue and then down here, I want to do crimson orange. So I'm gonna have my warm, my cools up here, my warms down here. So going along with that, I'm gonna put some green there and some turquoise right about there. Some lime green as well. I'm gonna do some orange over here. I'm gonna do some tangerine. Uh, I wanna get quite a bit of fuchsia on here, so I'm gonna do that right down that. And then I can dab in some of this um, chartreuse, which is more on the cool side because there is some green in it. So I'm gonna put my yellow, and again, the yellow tends to not always wanna come out of the bottle, so you really gotta give it a nice spank. And then finally, I'm gonna do some lemon yellow down here. And up there. All right, let's see what we get. We may get some brown, but that's okay. A lot of it's gonna pool in spots, so here we go. So I do have a little bit of brown over in that area. But that's what Color Burst looks like all laid out. So it's super fun, it's super cool. Let me show you the cards that we made with these backgrounds. I hope you enjoyed everything and this inspires you to pull your Color Burst out and to play because you really just can't go wrong. 
And here are my finished eight cards with the seven techniques that we used because that um, six technique was a double doozy in the sense that you got two out of that one. So this is the first technique, um, which was the sprinkle and then mist. And it's important when you're using such a bold background that your image isn't quite as bold, otherwise it gets a little bit lost and it can get busy. So I really like this set of stamps by Picket Fences because it is a cockatoo um, and I did, you know, dress it up in some others, but it allowed just to stay white and simple. So it's really a dynamic card. So this is the first one. And then this of course was the mist um, sprinkle and mist again. So this is the second one. I did do Nouveau drops on all of them. I have all that listed down below for you. And then this is the third one, which is the, I have it listed down here, the watercolor, use it as a watercolor paint. So super, you know, pretty. And again, this is a really bright dynamic image. So I left the background kind of simple and I just inked around the edges. And then this one is with the mermaid pins. That's another way you can use it. And then this one I think has to be my favorite. And this is with that textured um, paste. It's like a modeling paste. And we just added some of the color burst into it to give that beautiful texture and really nice crisp image on that. So that's really cute. And then these, the next two are the ones that we use the stencil and we sprayed on. Um, this actually ended up being my favorite, and this was the piece of paper that we laid on top of the stencil after it was misted and had color burst on it. And then this was the underside in which we misted it first and then laid our, whoop, that wasn't quite dry yet, <laughs> and we laid our uh, color burst on top and, and then we sandwiched on top of it. So that's a really cool background as well. And then last but not least, this one was just so busy as it is, I really didn't want to pop a bird on and um, cover up any of the beautiful flowers. So I just laid all the colors out that I had out for this video. Um, and then I did put a little sentiment down here that is from the Picket Fences um, bird stamp set as well, which is anything is possible. So, and then what I did was I backed it against some bright, colorful cardstock um, to create these wonderful A2 um, type cards. So even though in reality these are fairly simple cards, by using color for cardstock as your base and then just making sure that you keep a balance between bright and bold and then really simplistic, you can end up with some gorgeous cards. And I just popped out of the images and the sentiments um, onto the card as well, just to give it a little bit extra dementia. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Please share it, uh, like it, leave any questions in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed, I certainly hope you do so. Until next time, I'm Bets Golden. Happy crafting.